Hello, well today I'm going to be making a leather tool roll for carving chisels and I have made a mock-up in some rough bits of leather just to test out the sizing of the pockets and to make sure this all works okay. And the idea here, and this is the special feature really of a carving chisel tool roll, is I've got the chisels side by side so you can see the tips. So when you're doing a carving project you can reach out and easily extract whatever tool you might want from the roll. <laughs> They're all going to fall out now, aren't they? <laughs> uh, it's fairly secure. So there they are. I, it's going to be a bit longer because I've got a few more chisels. And of course you can roll this sort of thing up and they're nicely protected. So it's a very good sort of way of making a roll and I'll give you all the dimensions in a minute as well. Perhaps a, a quickly a little bit of background first of all. You know we had the carving weekend with the Bodgers in previous film where we were all carving Tudor roses. I've done a bit of carving in the past but not much and I have to say I really enjoyed the carving so I thought right let's have a look out for any old second-hand carving chisels. Got a, a, a little collection of them in a, a wooden box so in shocking condition all broken up, uh, bad tips etc but I've been gradually restoring them and I thought, right, I don't want these going back into a wooden box because they'll actually just chip their nicely honed and polished ends. So this is when I started looking around for leather tool rolls. And the sort of perceived wisdom is to do them so that they go head to toe like this. Makes good sense. You can see them, they're protected and it's fairly compact as well. So dimensions wise, I did a sort of sketch up. You can always freeze that if you want to and print it off. But I'll run through the dimensions as we come to it. Essentially it's very simple because the pockets are two and a half inches wide. They're four and a half inches deep. So really that's your two key if you like measurements. The gap between the pockets is two and a half inches. That gap there between the two rows of pockets. And you can make it as long or as short as you like. <laughs> there you are, we'll get making. I've got a slightly sort of scrappy bit of leather here which would be fine for this. It's not obviously got to be premium leather for a tool roll. And I'm going to make it roughly sort of 10 chisels wide. So essentially I'll use the full width of this bit of hide. So four and a half, four and a half is nine and then the back of it is twelve good as nine plus twelve is twenty-one so I need to make it twenty-one inches down. <laughs> Seems quite a lot actually when you start to cut it out like that. So let's mark it with a pen. 21. I'll mark it two or three places across here. Now the crucial thing when you're marking out is obviously to have your pockets staggered so that one pocket is opposite the seam of two neighbouring pockets. And so when you mark out, if you go like two and a half inches, two and a half inches, two and a half inches on the top row here, make sure when you come to mark the bottom row, you miss like half a pocket. So you have inch and a quarter, and then two and a half, two and a half, two and a half to stagger them. So they're out of alignment. So I will do that on here. So if I work off of this top edge, I'll put my two and a half, five, seven and a half, ten, etc. going down there. So there are my pockets, first four pockets. This side, I'm going to stagger it. So the first one, I leave an inch and a quarter. I half of two and a half. 
and then I start my two and a half inch wide pockets. So two and a half, five, seven and a half, ten, etc. Like that, the pockets will be staggered and the blades of the tool in this pocket can rest on the seam there and so on. But that's very important that you stagger your pockets. So I'm now marked out, ready for machine. Right, I have my the lever here. I'll start in the centre because that will actually help to anchor everything. It's always easy once you get the first bit in. <laughs> you don't obviously have to be too accurate with the pockets but it's quite nice to get it looking as neat as you reasonably can. So I'm just sewing two little silver dots that I can see. as I go along. Uh, at least I like this and then it, you don't get bits of thread caught up on everything. When you come to stitch the pockets on the other side it's best just to check that you've got everything in alignment and that they are sort of staggered and opposite each other but once you've done that you're away again. Well, finally, I'm just sewing on a couple of long straps to hold it all together once you roll the tool roll up. So I'll get those on. The straps, I'm just using the same lever. It's, it's quite strong enough. It's not got to be heavy duty or anything and uh, roughly about three quarters of an inch wide and about 30 inches long so I've made them quite long and I'm fixing them again it's not too critical but I'm doing them roughly an inch below the top of each pocket so it's quite a nice quick project Let's try it out, <laughs> see if it works. <laughs> well, I've only got four chisels here, but I'll pop them in. The alternate pocketing arrangement is certainly working. The idea would be it will roll up like that. And then one can just tie these ties around to keep it all secure. So I just do a couple of knots, I do all this with my lever tools, it's the same idea. So there you are, a tool roll that will take 19 carving chisels, made quite quickly, doesn't use too much leather, but it makes a very nice home for these chisels. And when you're doing a carving project, you can lay that out on the ground or on your workbench or wherever you're working, and you can instantly see what tools you've got. I just need some more tools to pop in there. Anyway, hope you enjoyed watching that one. Thanks so much indeed. Bye bye.